Well, let's now speak to journalist John Zarella. He's a frequent contributor to our network and covers the U.S. space program, among other things. Uh, but, John, we're going to first start talking about China. Uh, it has a new space station. It's getting ready to send a manned crew up there. It's declaring, you heard, their success on Mars, vowing to return, and also looking tie towards Jupiter. Uh, what are your thoughts on all this, this, this pace? Well, I, I think... I think certainly for China, it's hugely important uh, that uh, they continue on, and and they clearly are. It is very important to to the people of China, to the Chinese government, that uh, space is a priority. Clearly, uh, and the success that they have shown with uh, landing the rover successfully on Mars is a huge accomplishment. You know, the United States is basically the only other nation that has successfully landed a rover on Mars. So it was a major, major milestone to do that. Another major milestone, of course, putting up uh, those first elements of their brand new space station and preparing this coming week uh, to send Taikonauts up there for the first time. Uh, there clearly is a drive in China to make space, and space already is a priority, and they're doing really, really uh, incredible things in a in relatively very short period of time. You know better than most what the American space program uh, means to the American people or, or meant in its early years, the, this excitement, the national pride. And I imagine uh, now that's being felt across China. That sort of thing isn't just now, it impacts generations. Oh, without question, there's no doubt about it. You know, here in the United States, uh, when you talk about the space program, you go back to the Mercury program, the first launches, the Apollo era, which was really the golden era for NASA. And even now, 50 years later, uh, people in this country still celebrate every anniversary of that first moon landing, which is coming up July 20th. Uh, so, yeah, it's generational. Uh, and it's something that they're building blocks. So everything that the United States did was a building block towards the next thing in space, the space station, and now going back to, to the moon, perhaps as early as 2024. And for China, it'll be the exact same thing. As was mentioned in that piece just before I came on with you, they're looking for even greater things, going to Jupiter, going back to Mars. And when they go back to Mars, they'll do it in a grander scale with a more sophisticated rover, more sophisticated instruments. Everything is a building block towards the next vehicle, the next endeavor. I want to talk about uh, commercial flights to space. Yeah. Jeff Bezos auctioning, uh, essentially a, a step towards that. Most of us, I don't know about you, can't afford uh, $28 million for a round trip <laughs> no. ticket. Uh, but realistically, uh, when might this become a thing for the curious masses? Well, not for the curious masses, but still for the wealthy, even when they start flying. And, you know, 28 million is a lot to pay for an 11 minute flight. And that's all it's going to be 11 minutes up and down total for that flight. Uh, but the reality is, in the next couple of years, when they actually start taking space tourists on these flights, it's estimated the flight, the price tag for a seat. Uh, whether it's with Jeff Bezos, whether it's with Richard Branson on Virgin Galactic and his Spaceship Two, is going to be about a quarter of a million dollars a seat. So it's not cheap, but it is the very early beginnings of space tourism. And the more you do it, the more confident you get in it. Eventually, more of them will fly and the price tag will come down. Uh, so you know, perhaps within the next 10 to 20 years, certainly within the next 20, perhaps even the next 10, we'll see prices come down to where folks of more modest means will be able to afford a ticket on one of these, these spaceships. But this is really the beginning of a grand new era in space, space tourism. It's going to be phenomenal. John Zarelli, you're going to have to save me a seat on one of those flights. <laughs> Always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you. Absolutely.